We stay with uh, South Asia. Myanmar's leader Aung San Suu Kyi has now said that the Rohingya crisis is one of the biggest challenges that the country faces at the moment. She was speaking to media earlier and said that a government was doing its best to protect everyone in the strife-torn state of Rakhine. We have to take care of our citizens. We have to take care of everybody who is in our country, whether or not they are our citizens. It is our duty and we try our best. Uh, of course, our resources are not as, uh, as com complete and adequate as we would like them to be. But still, we try our best and we want to make sure that everyone is entitled to the protection of the law. Meanwhile, Indian parliamentary delegation led by Speaker of Lok Sabha, Sumitra Mahajan, has refused to be a part of the Bali Declaration highlighting the Rohingya crisis. The declaration was adopted at the World Parliamentary Forum on Sustainable Development held in Indonesia. According to Indian diplomats, declaration was not in line with the agreed global principles of sustainable development. The delegation took the stance on a day Prime Minister Narendra Modi concluded his visit to Myanmar, where he has expressed solidarity with the government against extremist violence in the Rakhine state. And the latest that we're hearing is that Malaysia has now agreed to provide temporary shelter to Rohingya Muslims who are fleeing the violence in Myanmar. More Rohingya Muslims from Myanmar continue to make their way to Bangladesh, saying they were forced to leave their homes to escape the violence. The Cox's Bazar region saw thousands of newly arrived Rohingya families making their way inland after crossing the Naf River bordering Myanmar. The surge of refugees, many sick or wounded, has strained resources of aid agencies and communities helping thousands of Rohingyas. Meanwhile, protests continue to be held across India against the systematic persecution of Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar. Local residents took to the streets in eastern Kolkata, in the eastern city of Kolkata, to protest the treatment meted out to minority Muslims in Myanmar. In fact, Suchi has come under growing international pressure to halt clearance operations by security forces in Rakhine. In a rare letter to the UN Security Council, the Secretary General of United Nations, Antonio Guterres, has also warned that the operations in Myanmar could amount to ethnic cleansing of the Rohingya Muslims. In fact, uh, we are on senior foreign editor Padma Rao. She joins me right now from the newsroom. Padma, thanks so much for joining us. Let's start by talking about how this crisis is now spilling over. International community has been taking note, but on the ground, apart from the statement uh, that has come from Suu Kyi, give us a sense of how do you see the situation developing? Well, you know, the international community or has, first of all, their relationship with Aung San Suu Kyi itself has been, uh, you know, a rather sort of uh, twin-edged one. Uh, on the one hand, they, she was their heroine and she was their human rights pin-up girl as long as she was herself in uh, house arrest, under house arrest. So, you know, she became a t-shirt symbol free Aung San Suu Kyi during those days. Now that she's a state councillor, uh, she's a politician, obviously, you know, there has to be some level of pragmatism that has set in and uh, the narrative being presented by the Myanmarese government and th uh, that of the Rohingyas are two different narratives. The Myanmarese government, the Rohingyas say they've been there since the 8th century and they're not all Muslims. There are some Hindus among them, though the majority Rohingya community is Muslim. Uh, but the Myanmarese government says they're actually Bengalis uh, from Bangladesh who infiltrated just after World War II and uh, that, you know, that they need to be sent back and they're not native. So they've been denied uh, citizenship in Myanmar and uh, they also the state refuses to call them Rohingyas they call them Bengalis so this is the status as far as they're concerned there are 1.1 million of them in Rakhine state of whom about 126,000 have fled across right. the border to Bangladesh uh, the international pressure well I don't think Aung San Suu Kyi is paying going to pay much heed to that because she is going by the dictum that you know the that that one man's terrorist is another man's freedom fighter mm -hmm. so to speak and it is primarily, they say, the Arakan uh, Rohingya Salvation Army, uh, which is being labelled a terror group uh, right. that has been held responsible for attacks on the Myanmarese border guards, uh, and that the Myanmarese army is only taking action against those people. Uh, and this is the group that uh, the Myanmar uh, government is focusing on as the terror group. 
All right, uh, Padma, we leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining us uh, for more on that story. Well, we move on with that.